how people interact. The first four uh, principles that we have studied have been associated with how people decide. What is the trade off that they face and how do they decide what to do? Now we want to go ahead and understand how people interact with each other. So we want, we must understand that whenever we talk about an economy as a whole, economy is nothing but it is the set of or group of people that live, right? And how people interact with each other is actually how the economy is going to go ahead and function. So the next three principles that we are going to do are going to be related to how people interact with each other. Let's go to the first one. So trade can make everyone better off. This is going to be a full-fledged concept when you do international economics later on. And we have theories which are related to absolute and comparative advantage in comparative advantage in international economics. But what this says is rather than going ahead and producing everything yourself and becoming self-sufficient, you should go ahead and produce the goods in which you have an advantage and let the other country or other firm go ahead and produce the other good. You buy from that country and you sell to the country in whatever you specialize. So instead of going ahead and producing commodity A and B both in your country, put all your resources to one of the goods. The good can be commodity A and specialize in that. Sell this to the other country and in return from this country, buy commodity B. This is known as comparative advantage. We'll talk about that in international trade, not here. So rather than being self-sufficient, People can specialize in producing one good. You produce one good or service and you exchange it for the other goods and service. Countries can also benefit from trade and specialization. So what you do is you get a better price abroad for the goods you produce. So, you know, you not only produce for your country, you also produce for the other country. And because you're producing so much, and when you sell it in the other country, you get a good price for it. And similarly, you buy the products from the other country. Now, imagine that suppose country one is labor intensive. It has a lot of labor, but it is not good in capital, less capital. Country B has less labor, but more capital. There, is, there are two products, A and B. A requires more labor. This requires more capital. If country A goes ahead, this one goes ahead and produces both this and this, then what is going to happen? Very soon, it will be using its resources inefficiently. Why? Because this product requires a lot of capital knowledge and you don't have that. So when you try and produce both the goods, you become inefficient at it. Why don't you only produce this? Produce it at your best. Produce it as cheap as you can, as lower price, at a price at as lower as you can. Let country B only produce good B. Good B. And then you buy it from this country at a cheaper price, this commodity, and send your product to country. B. So instead of producing everything yourself, you produce the good according to the resources in which you specialize and let the other person, other country produce the other good in which they specialize. You buy it from them, they buy it from you. Sixth principle. Markets are usually a good way to organize economic activity. See, what is a market? A market is where individuals come, they meet each other, they interact with each other, a price is set, one pays the price, the other buys the good. So market is nothing but a group of buyers and sellers, need not be in the same location. Today I can sit and order from Amazon 
from a seller who is distinct abroad or who is in a distinct place outside india within india very it doesn't matter to me very far away from me so you know they don't have to be in the same location it's just that if there is a marketplace available where buyers and sellers can come together online offline in a particular place then the economic activity can be done in a much better way so what does organizing economic activity mean these are the four questions that we ask what goods to produce this will depend on which goods are demanded the most i can go ahead and produce sweaters in an area which is summary 90% of the times how to produce them should i use more labor should i use more capital this will depend on what resources are available in your country how much of each to produce i want to produce both food and weapon how much how much is my population how much food will they demand who gets them who am i producing it for i'm producing weapons for national defense i'm producing food for my uh, general population so who is going to get them depending on that i will produce those goods now let's go ahead and let's take this forward now there is this uh, famous book by uh, the father of economics called adam smith the book is called the wealth of nation and he said that you know households and firms are led by an individual hand and what does that mean it means that if you give people a market so you know if i tomorrow go ahead and put four stalls somewhere of apple orange any pizza anything else books and i'm able to capture people who are going to visit these stalls i have sellers and buyers without any government intervention without any external intervention these people can go ahead and do buying and selling they are led by an invisible hand why what is the invisible hand these people are rational people they know what their economic well being is accordingly they will go ahead buy the product sell the product etc no role of government intervention no role of any external forces this is what is called an invisible hand that is the power of a market where buyers and sellers interact so in market economy market economy is which only works through the process of markets with lower intervention of the government these decisions result from interaction of many household and firms okay now let's talk about the invisible hand of it so what is the invisible hand say you have the demand coming from the buyers the supply coming from the sellers wherever demand meets supply you will determine the price and the quantity no need of any external factor so the interaction of buyer and seller will determine the price of goods how much goods should be produced the price reflects goods value to buyer and cost of producing to seller i will talk about this point again when we learn about consumer and producer surplus see i will always go ahead as a consumer and pay the price if it is worth it if i think that a mobile is worth 10000 i won't pay 12000 for it at max i will pay 10000 for it it is very good if i get it for 9000 so i will never pay something which is more than what i think its value is and a seller will not sell something lesser than the cost 
if the mobile costs six thousand to produce, seller will not sell it for five thousand. Seller will only sell it for seven thousand. So seller has to cover the cost, and buyer has to ensure that he gets the value from the product from whatever he is consuming. When both of these are satisfied, only then the right equilibrium price is determined. Because this price is the price at which buyers are willing to buy. They will buy only when the value that they get from the product is greater than the price they pay for it, or at least equal to it. Seller. Will sell when the cost is less than equal to the price. Price is more; it is covering the cost. So this price has to ensure this also and this also. So because this is an equilibrium price, where people are demanding and sellers are selling, transaction is taking place. So this price has to ensure both the things. So prices are self-guided in trust, you know, variables. It ensures that both consumer and firms benefit. It ensures that the well-being of both is concerned. It is taken care of. Well-being of both the individuals. Okay. Now the next principle. is called governments can sometime improve market efficiency a lot of times and again with time we will understand this in economics we may have inefficient markets example i'll just list them down you don't have to go through them externalities monopolies public goods etc externalities monopolies public goods are examples where markets don't function well for example when your friend is smoking a cigarette and you're standing right behind your friend you are also damaging your lungs but you are not going and asking your friend to pay a price for the damage caused to your health so price system does not exist for example when you go through a road and there is a street light on it you are using the street light but not exclusively paying for the street light public good no price system exist monopolies which i will show you charge a price much higher than the efficient prices illegal markets inefficient markets all these are examples where government can interfere and they can bring an efficient outcome because the earlier outcome is inefficient so this is where we want to have some role of the government enforce property rights the you know for example you would have seen that people go and they just write on the monuments why because nobody has paid for it for the construction of the monument the government can enforce a property right that if you go ahead and write on the monument you're going to pay a fee for it that is called the role of the government how it is trying to bring efficiency in the market so people are less inclined to work produce invest or purchase if the risk is high that their property will be stolen what can the government do in this case ensure that there is a better criminal um, base uh, criminal police i mean police base which takes care of the criminals a restaurant won't serve meal if customers do not pay before they leave obviously a music company won't produce cds if too many people avoid paying by making illegal copies so the government has to again step in and say that you know it is forbidden that you cannot produce illegal copies of movies right so there are a lot of places where governments will enter and governments will say 
that you know this is not an efficient outcome and we want to bring in efficient outcome all the places where governments fail the examples that i just gave you public goods externalities externality means when somebody is affecting someone like smoking but it is not there in the market you are not accounting for it in the market all these are called market failures so market failure by the very term means that the market fails and market fails means market is not able to establish efficiency efficiency is not there so it can be in externalities i give you an example another example is pollution suppose there is a factory near your house and this is causing a lot of pollution and you stay right here this is affecting you but it's not accounted anywhere the second example is market failure like monopoly for example let's take an example of vaccine what if only a single firm produces covid-19 vaccine and no other firm produces it then this firm can charge any price again government has to step in and say that this is a vaccine the maximum price you can charge has to be not more than 1000 are you getting it so government has to step in to bring an efficient outcome so public policy in these places can ensure efficiency okay sometimes government may step in to bring equity for example maybe it is the case that the outcome is of the economy is very inequitable for example let's say that uh, there is a tax this tax is on wheat wheat is consumed by rich but also by poor alike if you charge a tax on wheat it is affecting the poor this is a bad policy but if you go ahead and charge a tax on five star hotels if you charge on airplane tickets this is a good policy people who can afford these can afford to pay the tax also so again equity is what the government wants to bring through the right set of policies through the right charges through the right taxes okay now this is take it as the second assignment question and please try and do this in each of the following question please decide what the role of the government is i'm pausing it for a second take down this question try and solve it and then i will give you the answer to this so four questions public public schools workplace safety regulation public highway patent laws okay